here at the Fine Arts Center in the basement uh, while a storm rages. We don't even know. We don't even, can't even hear. Um, my name is S.B. Parks and I'm the costume shop supervisor here. And um, today I'm just going to give you a, a virtual tour and try to hit everything that I would uh, touch on if you were here in person. Um, and there's a lot to cover and uh, I could talk all night long. So got to get started and I'm going to try to stay on point. If you have any questions, type it into the chat. And um, one thing I just want to say about the costume shop and what we do here is uh, really my job and what we do here is a part of technical theater. And that just means that uh, we execute ideas here. Um, we're less about coming up with ideas and we are more about executing ideas, making sure that actors are safe, comfortable, that they can do everything they need to do, that a designer is satisfied with their look and that a director is satisfied um, with how everything comes together on stage. And so that's what we really try to do down here in the basement before we load everything up to the main stage. So the first thing I wanna talk about is our stock today. As you can see, we live with our stock. Um, you'll see the workroom in a minute, but this behind me, this is a set of moving racks. It is, these racks are set on a, um, on rails here, like a, you know, a college library basement, only we put clothes um, on racks on this. And this is a very important asset to our department um, because this is where any design begins. It begins with the clothes that we already have. Um, and we work with enough actors uh, on repeat enough that we have clothes here that we know fit them. And um, these racks are also very, uh, they're organized down to a, a pretty detailed level. So here on this rack, we have men's period shirts, peasant or romantic breeches, ladies renaissance dresses, ladies period skirts, long and full. Um, on this side of the room, we have mostly women's clothes. And on that side of the room, it's about half women's and the rest are men. Um, but that's not how we, that's not the only way that we store uh, clothes here in the costume shop. We also use a lot of boxes like this. For instance, this box of bowlers um, sort of speaks for itself. If you're looking for a bowler, this is the box you come to. Um, and that's how we keep hats. That's how we keep shoes. And that's how we keep a lot of folded clothes, uh, casual things that can just be folded and put into boxes. Um, let's see. Okay, so now let's go this way. This is a very important hallway down here, mostly because it links our workroom with our fitting room. And there's also more storage down here. Um, this, rack is an example of a show rack that we would um, work with when we have a show up and this show rack actually here is our leftovers from silent sky which is the show that we had one fitting for in march before uh before the performance got canceled um, but as you can see over here we have rack dividers and this is just telling us an um, actor name and their character and then we'll put their clothes behind them. Then we also have this rack here, which is um, buckets with everybody's name on them. And that's where we will keep accessories or fabric if we're uh, building clothes. Um, and then these buckets, uh, whatever's in them when we're ready to load up into the dressing rooms goes up to the dressing rooms. I just want to move on to talk a little bit about our uh, the machines that we use here in the shop. Um, this is an industrial sewing machine, and we use these just because they can take a lot of mileage, um, and they go fast, and they tend to be more powerful than a domestic machine. We have two of these industrials. We have one industrial overlock machine, and then we have three um, domestic machines that we use for. Um, just because we oftentimes will have, you know, four or five stitchers in here at a time, plus me, plus a designer, so things get um, pretty busy. Okay, so. Can we do the pan? Yeah, okay. let's do the pan. Uh, we'll show you the whole space here. 
so this we would call the workroom. Um, you're going to get a glimpse of work tables, our ironing uh, uh, center, and then you'll also see lots of racks. We actually have a skirt restock project happening right now, and um, these racks, uh, we have all different kinds of racks, uh, and we just use them constantly just because keeping garments on hangers and keeping them organized on a rack is probably about the most effective system that we have. Okay, so um, this central table in the middle, middle of it all is our ironing table and um, it may seem kind of boring, but uh, it's a very crucial part of what we do here, um, we use industrial irons with a gravity feed reservoir here. Um, and we use that for a few different reasons. These get really hot. And, oh, I'm not gonna get any good steam pizzao out of it. Anyway, this clicky button just releases steam on, on demand. The reservoir means that water will stay here longer. So we're not uh, breaking so that we can refill our water all the time. It's just pretty much constantly there. Um, so this table is used if we're building things and also it's used for um, uh, pre-show. So our music room stage manager, Terry Harrison, will come down here and she will press uh, shirts or whatever pre-show uh, tasks need to be taken care of, which Unfortunately, it's usually a lot of ironing. Um, we have some tricks that we use down here. Uh, I don't know if I've ever used spray starch at home, but we use it here a lot. Um, and a lot of times on men's shirts, we will just starch collar and cuffs, especially if they never take their jackets off. So that's the way we kind of cut corners a little bit backstage. Vinegar, uh, that's great for getting wrinkles out, especially if you are dropping a hem and you have you know, the hem that you pressed in last show, now you have to make it disappear for this show. We use vinegar for that. There's a lot of water. And then this is an excellent uh, product that we use here. It's a wrinkle releaser. And um, sometimes you can just spray this on a garment. You don't even have to iron it. And uh, if you do need to iron it, this is actually an aid. It helps your wrinkles come out faster and cleaner. Um, Another one, what is your training? It's a great question. Um, I've done a lot of different things for a long time. I was just thinking about it today. I've been uh, involved professionally in theater for 23 years. Um, I started my professional, my professional career as an actor at the Arvada Center. During their um, children's theater summer, I played um, Princess Gladiola in Hieronymus H. Frog the Frog Prince. Um, but my true passion is puppetry, and uh, I sort of figured out that costumes was a pretty good route to puppetry, and along the way, I accidentally got some really excellent costuming training from the University of Colorado Boulder, it's where I did my undergrad, and I did one year at CU Denver, um, and I've worked let's see, locally at the Denver Center, Curious Theater, um, I guess those are sort of the big ones. And then I've worked at puppet theaters um, all over the country. And I did my graduate work at the University of Connecticut um, in puppet arts. And after that, I lived in Northern California and did a lot of designing, a lot of costumes, set and props and puppet designing in the Bay Area before I moved to Hartford, Connecticut, where I worked at the Hartford Stage Company for six and a half years as their costume crafts artisan. I'm gonna geek out on crafts in a minute. Um, and then three years ago, uh, I came here. And uh, that's, there you go, that's my bio here. All right, let me talk, let me talk about this. Are we ready for that? Yeah. Um, so this, uh, we sort of, I thought of it today. These are sort of like our design doors, and this is where we will um, post renderings of the shows that we're currently working on. And um, as you can tell, we're sort of in limbo because these are still posted from Silent Sky, which again was our production that was um, that was uh, canceled in March. 
but um, hopefully we'll be able to use these designs in the future. Um, uh, okay. Uh, and then I also just want to talk about a few tools that we use. I, I don't know if you can see these things lined up, but um, this is a dress form. Here's a naked dress form. Um, these are really important to our work, whether or not we're building. Um, uh, we can pad these out to match uh, actors' measurements. Uh, they're also a great way to just sort of run through, say we have 10 jackets that are a possibility. We can run through them on the form and have some idea of how they're going to fit before we hit a fitting. They're also great if we are working with designers at a distance so that we can put garments on them and a designer can see what it might look like. Um, okay, so now I want to talk about crafts and I have to talk about it quickly. So costume crafts are anything um, that's a costume that's not clothes. So um, in, in my mind that shoes, shoes are a pretty big part of crafts, hats, uh, leather work, belts, neckwear, uh, armor, uh, there's a lot of cool stuff in crafts. And this is sort of uh, just an example of our material storage and this is all craft stuff. These little boxes up here are all insoles, they're all foam insoles. And there's a dozen pairs of insoles in each one of these boxes. And I would say that I buy this, like um, these shoe insoles about once a season, we go through all of these. Um, uh, there's shoe stretchers over here. So we do a lot of work to try to make shoes work for actors. Um, shoe stretching is one of the things we do there in Anna in the tropics. We had a beautiful pair of vintage shoes in the show that had to go on a stretcher every night. Otherwise they would shrink too much uh, for the uh, actress to wear the next day. So sometimes, um, you know, like the wardrobe has to keep up with, uh, have to keep up with snapped buttons and hems that are uh, letting down. They also have to deal with shoes um, and keeping shoes in good shape throughout a show, whether that's polishing, whether that's keeping them stretched, whether it's replacing insoles, things like that. So shoes, are pretty major part of what we focus on here. Um, then I want to talk just a little bit about some cool millinery tools. You can see these um, balsa wood head blocks. Uh, you can pin into these. So they're really great for all kinds of work uh, with headwear. Um, this is a cool, uh, this is a uh, wig block. This is a canvas block. And it has a hole on the bottom of it, and it sits onto um, it sits onto a mount on a our desk up in the wig room. And as you can see, uh, we have this lovely veil that was in Sound of Music on this guy. But usually, uh, wigs will live on this. And then and this is an eat craft thing. Um, this is a hat stretcher. So, um, and this poor bowler. This was in Barnum. This uh, hat has been stretched, I think, one and a half inches beyond what it was actually manufactured to be. Um, so the way, one of the ways we do that is we'll insert the uh, stretcher into the hat, and then you just twist this, and it will stretch that hat to fit an actor. Um, and hats that are made out of felt like this are just endlessly forgiving. You can alter it to be larger and smaller forever, really. Okay, so now I'm gonna share a screen and uh, what I'm sharing here are costume research boards. So this is an example of what was sent to me by our um, costume designer. Our costume designer for The Sound of Music um, it was, is uh, Sarah Bergeau. She's a young designer, she's based out of New York. And we had an interesting schedule for this show. Usually we'll have a designer um, who will come out and will be present for first fittings, which usually happens during the first week of rehearsals. And Sarah wasn't able to do that. So um, we really had to work pretty closely um, in sending pictures back and forth about uh, deciding on rental packages, which we ended up renting from three different places. 
and then also talking to her about what we had in stock and what might work. Um, I really want to get to Maria. Here we go. So um, here's her wedding dress. And when I looked at this board that uh, Sarah sent me, I immediately thought of all of these wonderful vintage gowns that we have in stock that have been donated through the years. So this is sort of an interesting part of my job that's sort of like costume anthropology and you'll find uh, really interesting pieces that have clearly been donated that are actually really a piece of history of say Colorado Springs or even other places depending on where people traveled or where they got these garments before they ended up um, in our stock. Um, so this is uh, just some more ideas about what Maria could look like. I love this opening page here that's showing the traditional clothes and the homemade clothes um, that Maria might wear and also is included here is a picture of actually Maria von Trapp herself and what she would have worn. Um, this is great because we have a lot of primary research photos from the time. We're also getting some secondary research um, from ads and then also from art pieces. So uh, I love looking at a designer's uh, boards because they just have a lot, a lot to offer me in thinking about not only a specific garment, but also the mood um, and also to get a really sense of the time period. I just wanted to share some of the wedding gown options that we found looking at those, um, all of that research that Sarah submitted. So, you know, for instance, we have beautiful gowns like this that are exactly the right period. And another one here, beautiful beading on this. And the only problem is the 107 covered buttons in the back, but have no fear in this shop, we would most certainly insert a, a zipper right there. Um, but then we also found this beautiful thing, which honestly, I, I wouldn't have thought this to be a first choice, but the way that Nathan Halverson, the director of Sound of Music, envisioned Maria, and also the way that Lauren um, Lukacek, who played Maria, envisioned her, was really a lot more playful and fun and youthful. And this dress just has this beautiful swinging skirt um, and really fit the character better and really, um, I feel like, solidified her as being a different kind of Maria. It wasn't sort of stoic and kind of a sad wedding dress. It was really flirtatious and fun. Um, oh, we got some. Okay. Oh, what's the oddest costume you've ever made? <laughs> um, boy, oddest costume. I mean, we make a lot of odd things here. Uh, weird, weird things. Um, body padding is always odd. Um, so the, um, this is trench bowl padding for Matilda. Uh, that was pretty crazy. Um, boy, uh, I've made some red metallic armor before for the harpy in the Tempest. Um, wow, there's a lot of weird things. Making animals is always kind of a fun thing. We do that here a lot upstairs, so animal ears and and also there's a lot of challenges about like, what's the least you can do to convey character? Um, because a lot of times, especially upstairs, actors don't have any help. They don't have that wardrobe help backstage. So we have to make their crazy costumes work for them to be able to do it all themselves. Cool. Um, it looks like that's about it. Cool. So th we got lots of thank you comments. Awesome. Thank you all. Thanks for uh, a virtual tour. I hope one day we'll be able to do um, a pretty extensive in-person tool uh, tour here. Uh, we we uh, rehearsed yesterday and I talked for 40 minutes. I only made it through half of my content. So I have so much more to share. <laughs>
Yeah, thanks. And keep an eye out for your emails. We have lots of crazy ideas for virtual tours. So we're going to keep doing it as long as we as long as we can. Cool. All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thanks, everybody.